Okay, so just there resetted the uh, stopwatch. Ah, and the moon looks a little bit bigger, just a little bit. We're going to do what's called a mid-course correction. This is exactly uh, what we did, uh, or what I was about to explain earlier. Uh, and we're basically going to... That's actually not going to help us much. Translation. We're going to use the translation engines now to trim. Uh, there's the moon again, looking a little bit bigger. Um, we're going to trim this now in whatever way we can so that these lines uh, line up. Okay, so that's helping. Okay, and that was literally it. Um, actually, uh, we're at a uh, we're at a node right now, so we're gonna go ahead and do a uh, what should we call it? Um, a a, a nodal burn. What is it? We're gonna lower our inclination with the moon. We can do it with the uh, translating engines because if you look, we're only at 1,000. This is only about 4,000 miles per hour, so we can easily manage to manipulate it. Uh, so we can play around with the uh, engines here. There we go. That's helping. Okay, that's about as low as we're going to get it. But now you can see, just with about... Five seconds of uh, thrust, that's it. We've just done it now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, advance time again. Rotation. Come off of the autopilot, and we're going to go to uh, 1,000. And this time, we're going to spin this way. So I'm going to keep an eye on the moon uh, as it comes closer. Several, I'm sure at least one day has gone by since we left the Earth. It's very far away. And it's amazing to think in 1960, uh, what is it, 18, about 18 astronauts. Actually 21 because of Apollo 10, no, because of Apollo 13, 24. 24 astronauts, I think, have been away this far from the Earth. It's insane to think in 1960 they, they sent people out this far. I don't know about you guys, but I just love the sheer silence of space. Uh, it's fantastic and it's eerie. Uh, there's something special to it. Uh, and the moon's getting larger now. Uh-oh. Look. The Earth is only 49% of the gravity. Where's the other 51%? Ladies and gentlemen, the sun has taken over. The sun now accounts for 50% and the moon 1% of the gravity. So we've changed our MFD and everything. If we hit prograde now, this is what the Earth's orbit, or our orbit, since we're not orbiting the Earth. Well, we are, but it's not the most powerful source out there right now of gravity. This is what our orbit looks like around the sun and its altitude. 148.8 gigameters, or about just under 1 AU. So you can see now we're orbiting the sun much in the same fashion out the left window as we were the Earth. And now you can get a frame of reference of the solar system. Uh, going back to 1000. Uh, you can see all the, pla uh, all the um, planets now orbit this way. You can see Mercury and Venus are very close in. Earth is here, and the other gas giants and else can be as far out as they want. We're also getting close to the moon.
It's kind of weird. Aside from the video glitches, I feel like this is one of my most successful uh, tutorials so far. And I think that has to do with the fact that what I do best is slingshotting between moon to planet to else thing. Like one time I did a flight from Titan to Triton. I know that sounds like, you know, weird and stuff, but um, I, you know, the similar names, but yes, I actually did that before. Check that out, 3060. Oh, by the way, orbital speed around the sun. This far out, 30,000 meters per second. More than that. 30,560 meters per second. The sun is big, and uh, actually, um, we need to do another mid-course correction. The moon is still not uh, accounting for that much gravity, uh, so we're going to auto-reference the sun again. Ah, but now um, we need to be concerned with where the Earth is. So we're not going to auto-reference the sun. Uh, we're going to reference the Earth, and we're going to need to drive ourselves prograde. The autopilot will not help us here, because it will take us only to the sun prograde vector. But we want the Earth prograde velocity vector, because we want to add to this a little bit. So we're going to go translation. translation. And we're going to trim that up a little bit. Uh, maybe it's going to need the engines. Yes. There we go. Okay, so I just fixed it now. We're going uh, program Rotation. again. And we're going to auto-reference the sun again. So we go back to 10. Take it off the autopilot. 100. And, uh, well, we're still now. 1,000. So the moon is beginning to look a little bit more than a uh, something out the window. I think it's still smaller than, yeah, uh, just a little bit, actually. Um, the moon is about the same angular diameter as the Earth from our current distance. Uh, it's very hard to tell what's down there now because we're getting so high now, you can't really do studies on the Earth without a telescope. But we're approaching the moon. Now, we're getting closer, so I'm not as concerned with this. Um, so here's what we're going to do now, because the moon is beginning to account for some of the gravity. We're going to go on to the orbital approach phase for the moon. And basically what we watch now is this thing right here. Um, the periapsis altitude of the moon, or paraloon. And what we have to do is make sure uh, that the paraloon passes close, but not within the surface of the moon. Right now it says we're going to be at negative uh, 1,670 uh, kilometers in altitude, which means we're going to crash into the moon. So we have to fix that, and uh, we're going to come off of 1,000 time acceleration now because the moon is getting very close now, you can see it. Um, and now the gravity is up to 30%. The moon's gonna be taking over soon, the gravity, the gravitational field. Going back to 1,000 again, because it's gonna be a little bit longer. Okay, the moon has taken over. It's the strongest source of gravity. Uh, we are officially in the approach phase, and we're changing the map. Get this, we can change the map from the Earth to the Moon. That's a map of the Moon. And what's our base? It is Brighton Beach. Targeted. We're going to land there. We're also upside down. Or are we? Um, I do not want to orbit retrograde going off of uh, time. So here's what we're going to do now. Uh, the North Pole is up there, which means uh, we're going to orbit retrograde, uh, which is backwards, and I don't like orbiting things backwards. So we're going to go um, to orbiting forwards. And in order to do that, I add... How you like that? It actually sounds like the timer actually sounds like it was a device. That was the timer, in case you didn't know. The timer actually sounds like a device uh, in the spacecraft. 
uh, not in this one, but it sounds just like the um, the Delta Glider fours if you try and in reverse or, or retro thrust while the doors are closed, it will be like beep beep warning beep beep, and the beeping sounds just like my alarm. That was cool. Okay, so we need to add a little bit of a, a velocity component in this direction. And what you're going to see is this ticker tape will flip around upside down. Uh, and this will go down and then up again. Again, low, but not under the surface. So we burn now. And it's just reversed. And it doesn't take much burn power because the moon is small and we're far out. And this will perturb a lot because uh, the moon is still only accounting for 48%. So we're going to have to trim multiple times. So now we're going to face the moon. And we're going to advance to uh, 100 times. We're now accelerating due to gravity of the moon. Uh, we're now at about 2,300 miles per hour. So you can see uh, our orbit here does not pass within Brighton Beach. Uh, so we have to do two things. One is change this to, oh, it is ground track. So we have to do two things, or one thing. When we reach this node here, we have to burn so that the orbit passes us over Brighton Beach so that we can land there. And as we get close now, if I hold the cheat mode, you can see now there's Brighton Beach. Um, probably not 250 degrees as it's near the Terminator, maybe 150. Um, but as we get closer, you'll see the, the craters and features around the moon will become apparent. We're going to go up to a thousand X. And now you can see we're, we're entering, beginning to enter orbit around the moon. Uh, I'm now going to go, okay, that is the, I can't tell from this. Go to align planes um, and do the moon. Well, that doesn't seem reference moon target moon, that's why. Okay, so this is going to be the descending node, I think. Uh, so I'll go orbit plus. I'm also going to open the retro uh, grade engines because we're probably going to do some retro burns soon. Let's go ahead back to the map. We'll go off autopilot uh, to 100 times. And now that looks cool. And there you can now see the, the, the land, the uh, craters and Oh my god. Yeah, that was the craters. Um, before you could only see the landing sites. It's like, oh my god, there's so many of them. Okay, the problem is we have a argument of perigee, or, or no, a longitude of the ascending node, which is very bad. It's also the longitude of Brightonson Beach. Uh, so what can we do to change that? Well, first we can uh, do an inclination burn first. And this is quick because the moon is small and we're still far out. So look at how quickly that line is growing. Yeah, why'd they make Brighton Beach so far north? Uh, we're still doing all right on fuel, but we're getting close. Okay, that's 
should do it. Now there's a problem. Earlier, you might be like, oh, well, just wait for the, for the Earth to rotate. Now here's the problem. The moon rotates, but in a month. Which means we'd have to wait a month for that orbit to switch. So we're gonna have to uh, dish out some orbital mechanics uh, to do that. Now we're gonna turn prograde and prepare for the, uh, the retrograde burn. So this is a really good uh, image of the moon. Uh, we're now leaving that sort of word suspended in space now kind of thing um, to the moon is right beside us kind of stage. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, we're going back to 100x. Okay, the next thing I need to do is figure out um, how long it's going to take us to slow down. The uh, orbital velocity of the, of the moon is about 1680 uh, uh, meters per second. And uh, the escape is going to be 2375 mm, plus about 100 because we have, in, we have uh, eccentricity. So as a general guess, that's going to take us, let's see, 39.75. So it only looks like about 19 seconds to slow down. That seems kind of uh, on the low side. Eh, maybe not. Okay, we'll say 19 seconds. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna turn retrograde. And, uh... I'm fairly alright with this, uh... With this altitude. Uh, that one. 112 kilometers. I think that's alright for now. Uh... Personally, I would like a lower orbit, but it's going to be a while because we need to figure out how to reach Brighton Beach. Okay, so 19 seconds uh, before periopsis is when we do our retrograde burn. Remember from our orbital mechanics um, tutorial, when you burn retrograde, you slow down. Right now we're in what's called an escape trajectory, which means the eccentricity is greater than one. So what's gonna happen is as we slow down, you're gonna get a line, and then you're gonna get an extremely eccentric ellipse. And as we slow down, that's gonna get more and more circular until it's a circle. And then we cut our engines. So, 10x. And the moon should start to appear out the, uh, the right window, because we're getting really close. Um, 20 seconds, right? Okay, so we're about 15 seconds from the burn now. Five, four, three, two, one, now. So the orbit is collapsing now. We've just entered orbit around the moon. And now that is going to become circular, and now you can see the ground tracks there across the ground are repetitive because now we're going to stay at the moon. OK, 
Okay, so that was good timing as well. Um, going to get ready for uh, main engine cutoff. There we go, and I'm going to be in a high eccentric uh, orbit. We're going to go down to about 60 kilometers. That's closer to where I wanted to be. So now you can see the problem that we have. Uh, we don't come anywhere near Brighton Beach in the near future, and that's a problem. And the, the main issue is that our uh, node here is right under Brighton Beach. So we have to figure out how to move um, how to move the node. And that's really difficult because phasing orbits are are very difficult on the moon because it orbits, I mean it rotates so slowly. So here's the moon up close. We're about 100 kilometers above it. And we can only see a little fraction of it like before we saw the Earth. Uh, the Earth is also not... Vi huh. Uh, that was interesting. We apparently did something different than Apollo because when Apollo entered uh, orbit, they were not visible to the Earth. So we're now in a stable orbit around the Earth, which is good. All right, I'm going to pause the video until I can figure out what to do. Okay, so I figured it out. Um, remember, the longitude of the ascending node is defined as uh, the area where the nodes are. So if there are no nodes, there's no longitude of the ascending node. So now what we have to do, that means I've made a mistake. I shouldn't have done the inclination burn first. So now I have to collapse the inclined orbit that I just made and then re-incline it at a different point, which means I'm going to waste a heck of a ton of fuel and I'm probably going to run out. But if I run out, then we'll just return with 19, 18 kilograms of fuel. That's just to say what would happen in case I didn't make this mistake. Okay, um, so now what we're going to do is turn orbit plus, go to 10x, and go to 100x. And we're going to keep an eye on the... Actually, that doesn't help. Uh, keep an eye on the nodes. I'm not going to time it this time, uh, because it should be fairly fast. probably good enough. And we're going to burn now to collapse this. Actually, um, it's happening faster than I had hoped, which is a good thing. It means we're going to spend less fuel doing it. What I'm trying to do is, is keep, keep 
to be aligned with the constantly changing uh, orbit plus vector, and it's changing because we're changing the angle of the orbit. Two degrees, that's fine enough. Man, we are so low on fuel, it's unbelievable. See, if I don't run out now, I'm worried that I'm going to run out when I try and land there, which is even more dangerous. Okay, so the longitude of um, Brighton Beach is 33 west, and I want to do the burn 90 degrees from... So I burn, um, orbit plus, let's go to rotation, I burn orbit plus at 123.44 degrees west, and that will be the cheapest burn that I can do. Okay, so here's 100x. Ooh, it's, man, that scared me. Um, we're going to be much lower than this in a couple uh, minutes, though. Uh, yeah, that was 100. Okay, we're getting closer now. I'm back to 10x. And uh, it's going to be 123. So let's go orbit plus now. Uh, okay, that's it. So now we burn and hope we don't run out of fuel. And just for precision, I'm going to zoom up on Brighton Beach so that I can see what the... Uh... Oh my god, we're going to have 900 kilograms left. That's it. Um, and that's almost it for us. We have to be very careful with whatever fuel we have left. Just reset the video. And because I'm so concerned about fuel consumption now, I'm going to perform the retrograde burn at the periapsis. I could do it now, but um, every bit of fuel matters. Back to regular time. So what I'm going to do now is burn so that the um, apogee and perigee switch sides just like that. Uh, and going to go a little bit further. The great thing is we know we're going to hit the ground um, at that point because there's no atmosphere. So that works out nicely for figuring out where we want to go. Uh, that's cutting it close, but I think that will do.
Actually, one thing I need to do is, um, did I, yes, I did, never mind. Okay. Um, I need to figure out what the vessel mass is right now. So what I'm going to do now, um, because there's no, I don't have any mass tables with me, is I'm going to turn prograde. We're going to make up some of that ground that I was concerned about getting too close. Mm -hmm. By doing a incredibly quick burn just to find out what my acceleration is from the engines. So I'm going to watch this value here. I'm going to do it on one tenth uh, time, normal time, because I don't want to expend any unnecessary fuel. It's also going to be a pulse burn. All right, so there's one tenth. Fourteen, just fourteen point two. Seriously. No, that's not right. We're going to have to guesstimate. Say, uh, 1700. Okay, so nothing much changes, actually. It's just we're going faster, which is good, uh, in my calculation. So we still have the normal distance than we would to slow down. Okay, so now we need to go into the, um the deorbit phase. And that's basically to say um, we're going to land at Brighton Beach. We're going to land on a pad, not a runway. Uh, this has to be a rocket touchdown because there's no atmosphere. Just like translation under the influence of gravity tutorial. That's what we're going to be doing. So we need to figure out how long does it take to slow down from the full orbital velocity that we're going right now to zero and be over the pad? Uh, that's yielded by the physics equation d equals one half at squared. Um, given the time it takes to decelerate, which is 77 and a half seconds, and the acceleration, which is about 22 meters per second, and the speed, uh, which is 1630 meters per second, it will take us um, 62 kilometers to slow down. So when the base distance is 62, we hit the gas in the opposite direction and hope for the best. We also have to stop ourselves from hitting the surface uh, because as soon as we start to decrease our orbital velocity, we're going to start falling towards the surface, which is why we need our hover engines. And if this runs out, we're in big trouble. Um, and Can I seriously not cross feed? I need to cross feed this. Oh, what? Now, oh my god, now I'm in even more trouble than I thought. Okay, so the last things that need to happen now um, are to get the VOR VTOL stuff. This is the VOR um, ver VTOL standing for Vertical Takeoff and Landing. Um, 
<clears throat> MFD, which shows the uh, information needed to perform a vertical takeoff and a landing. Uh, we didn't use that when we were doing the translation. That was visual, but this is the real deal. We're going to do... Uh, we're going to do full uh, instrumental approach. So this is the pad two. We're going to aim for pad two, uh, and the frequency for the transmitter is one sixteen three zero. Okay, so we go to VRR VTOL now and keep it on nav one. It will tell us when we have a signal, and it will tell us where the signal is coming from. Uh, so I'm going to go off of retrograde now and uh, keep an eye on the map. So we're going to go to 10x time acceleration. We're going to be very close to the lunar surface when we get to Brighton Beach. Maybe about 5 kilometers in altitude. I try to aim for about 5 uh, kilometers when I enter into uh, <coughs> when I enter into uh, the final um, descent phase. See, this section of the moon here contains a lot of maria, which are the uh, volcanic lowlands. We're now 90,000 feet above the surface of the moon. Okay, this will be much faster now. Um, we're nearing the 500 kilometer mark, I think it was for the transmitter. We won't get the transmitter until the horizon goes over uh, the surface there. Um, but for now, it's time to configure for the surface. So we're going to tell the autopilot... How in... How is that possible? Seriously, how is that possible? Distance 471 kilometers. It's below, it's below the horizon. I have no, how is that possible? Seriously. Look, it's below the horizon. I have no idea why we can get the, get the thing now. But anyway, we're going to tell, we're going to tell it to level the horizon now. What is that? <laughs> it was the timer again. <laughs> it made me feel like a, a, a alarm just went red. Uh, I was <laughs> I was concerned that would happen. It sounds just like it. It's crazy. So now what I'm going to try and do is rotate myself so that I'm directly in front of uh, this, and then I pre perform a retrograde burn. I also have to be ready to hit this hover hold altimeter thing when it when it's time. And the, the trick is to keep the prograde velocity vector, which I can't find right now because it's directly behind us, um, aimed at the pad. 
in that way we we spend less fuel because hovering wastes fuel so long as you keep moving you don't waste any fuel because momentum is conserved okay um right so 62 kilometers we're, we're getting close we're going to be coming up over the horizon now which means we should be able to get the pad signal soon Seriously, I have absolutely no idea why we could get that when we were when we were below the horizon. The, okay, it's just now come up over the horizon. Okay, we are now directly opposite the directional vector of oh, here comes the sun. Uh, of our motion relative to Brighton Beach. Also, we need to start watching the altitude. Okay, we're getting very close uh, to the time of this, and we have to watch our vertical speed here. If it gets too high, we could be in for trouble. If we can't stop in time, then we could get we could get in a huge amount of trouble and not be able to stop ourselves, and we could smash into the surface. Okay, we're now going to hit um, to kill rotation once I uh, finally align there. Okay, here it comes. 70, 68, 67, 65, that's it, now. We slow down now. Okay, uh, we need to go under the surface. We need to stop our vertical acceleration. I'm now increasing a little bit of hover thrust to stop it. There is the pad there. We need to reach the speed. We need to get our speed down by the time we get there. Uh, not looking so good on fuel. Um, that's not a very good thing. We're gonna come off of the kill rotation. We're gonna change the path of um, deceleration a little bit so that we're uh, against it. Uh, coming a little bit offside of um, the pad, going to add a little bit more um, retrograde uh, burn this way. Uh, we're passing the pad, which is not what I wanted to have happen. Um, slow me down, please. Okay, so our calculations were wrong a little bit, which is unfortunate, um, and we're about to run out of fuel. Yes, we are actually going to run out of fuel. I'm going to kill all... Uh, So what I've done now was I killed all of the, uh, um, or I've, I've given up slowing down. Gear down. You are clear to land. So if I'm lucky, I have just enough fuel to make a soft touchdown. Twenty-five hundred. Now where's my where's my prograde velocity vector? It's down. I'm so mad I can't do a cross. One thousand. Okay. Five hundred. Oh god. Four hundred. Three hundred. This is where it comes down to the wire. Literally. One 
100. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Oh my god! We actually made it! That was incredible! Did you see how much fuel we had left? We literally hit the ground. We, we might have almost damaged the landing gear, but we actually did it. That was crazy. Um, if I didn't make that mistake, we could have landed on the pad. Um, but we... Hey, we made a soft landing on the moon. Um, so, remember what I said if we ran out. 1918 we have left. Come on now. It's as close as we're going to get it. So yes, we, we have we have some fuel left. We didn't make that mistake. Uh, I'd like to finish that off now. So let's go back into the air where we were before. So we're going to go straight up. Nine, eight, ignition You're up again. Has started. Six, five, You're four, four three, uh, two, up. one, zero. Up. We have commit and we have liftoff. So we're going to redo that and say what happens um, when we just stopped there. Okay, pad two is now available. Okay, so uh, pretending we didn't have to do that descent because we run out of fuel, um, we basically came out of the approach phase and, and we stopped here. Okay, so now, um, now that we've stopped all of our orbital velocity, we are going to stop all of our um, prograde velocity, which I think we have done our ground speed. Um, I guess we have none because it doesn't say we have any, um, but okay. Oh yes, there it is. Horizontal speed 0 0.01. Okay, so um, that deals with all of the uh, with all the horizontal velocity. So okay, um, we've slowed down now. Uh, we're going to enter into a sort of cruise phase. We're going to slow down our descent. So now what we need to do, now that we've killed all of our velocity off, is we need to face um, Brighton Beach. So we're facing Brighton Beach. We're going to add uh, horizontal velocity. And so here's what I was talking about. We basically want to keep this above the pad like that. And I'm going to add more horizontal speed. Um, in fact, a lot, because we're never going to get there unless I add a lot. And because it's going to take too long for our retrograde engines to slow down, I'm going to turn the spacecraft around. We'll begin to hear the proximity uh, meter when we get lower. I'm taking off more hover thrust so that we can now um, descend. So basically what I'm trying to do now is go towards the pad and also um, keep the velocity vector. Um, the green cross represents the position vector and the yellow uh, arrow the velocity vector. Okay, we're starting to decelerate, I mean uh, go towards the ground too quickly now. So I'm going to add in a little bit more power that we need to actually um, accelerate back up. Good, and keep the kill rotation on. Uh, now we're going to begin 
slowing down as we approach the pad. For some reason, I think our acceleration was only 14 uh, meters per second squared. I'm not sure why that is, because earlier I saw it was at 20. Um, so I don't understand why it was doing that. Okay, so we need to do a little bit of uh, rotating now. There we go. Our um, velocity vector and our position vectors are still very much aligned. We are nearly over pad 2 now, as indicated by the VR or VTOL thing. Going to decelerate again. Uh, horizontal speed now down to uh, oops, other direction. 7.83 uh, meters per second, and now we kill everything. How did I? Uh, I must have overkilled. I saw 0 0.00. 2500. Okay, that's it. Okay, we're at a good horizontal speed now, so I'm decreasing hover again so that we go down at this velocity. I'm also going to add in a little bit of translation, translation because we need to go this way. Okay, we are now centered nearly directly over the pad. You can see now, if we didn't make that mistake, we would have plenty of fuel to actually uh, land with. Okay, let's continue bringing this down. Okay, now we kill all horizontal velocity. We are virtually above the pad. Okay, we're stopped above the pad. That's a good speed now, uh, so I'm going to start slowing us down, adding back in some vertical acceleration. One thousand. Okay, so we're centered above the pad now. It's just about... Um, slowing down before we hit the ground. So I'm going to put the kill rotate. We're not rotating anyway, so it doesn't want to take it. Okay, we're going to add more power uh, for deceleration. 500. And then remove that. 400. Putting the gear down, adding a little bit more power. Gear down. One hundred. Add a little bit more power. And a little bit more power. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Okay, here comes touchdown. Ten. Okay, and I'm going to decelerate to the touchdown speed of... Um, that's good. Actually, I'm going to have to uh, trim this off a little bit. Really difficult to try and get it to uh, trim the hover engines. That's good enough. Point two um, meters per second is plenty. Here it comes. Oh god, I stopped again. Touchdown on the moon. That's it. Um, we come off of level horizon now. All the hover engine has been turned off. There's still plenty of fuel as I anticipated. Attitude off. 
turn the uh, reaction control system off, the HUD off. I got it right every time. MFD's off. Uh, but first, the annoying beepy thing. Turn the lights off. Radiator must stay open. Um, retro doors close. We're going to open the nose cone. And we're going to also open the airlock. This is, this is a little bit different from uh, the space station because um, there's no air. So we can only open the outer door. And look, it's another ship over here. Sitting on the pad. Nose cone open. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and evacuate the uh, chamber. Oh, I forgot the Delta glider is cheap. It doesn't have functionality. Open the outer airlock door. Outer door open. Okay. And put the airlock ladder down. Okay, and we'll tell them to fill us up by the by the next episode. Um, so with the airlock ladder down, we're here on the moon uh, safely. I think I think we would have been all right that first time. Um, of course, the only problem uh, I love these things here. Where is it? It like disappeared. That was weird. Uh, the only thing is uh, just the mistake that I made earlier by doing that, but that's okay. So uh, this has been Dr. Aeronautics um, Orbital Tutorial 13, uh, landing on the moon. And I will see you guys next time for the trip home. Bye.